Yeah, Mondays, we kick it with Jay Feely. He joins us here on Bickley and Murata Mornings. Jay, good morning Jay. to you. Hey. I did not think. What's up, boys? Uh, last, How are you? Thinking about this, I didn't think we'd be talking about a win uh, with the Cardinals going to <laughs> Santa Clara. But here we are, the, the wacky nature of the NFL, right? Especially at halftime. You know, I mean, it felt, how much did it feel like the Lions game? You're in the game. You have a good start. You're right there. And then you get a field goal block. They run it back for a touchdown. Then you throw a pick six. And you're like, here we go again. Like, the game's over. Same story. This team can't do it. And then they find a way to get three turnovers in the second half and turn this game around. And what a great win. And what a what a day for kickers, huh, Jay? You've got the Cardinals dude, Chad Ryland, who gets a, a, a kick block for a scoop and score only to make a game winner. And then on the other side, don't they realize you're the only kicker who should try to tackle people? <laughs> <laughs> I know, especially a Michigan guy. Right. He's got to be a little tougher. Right. You know, you can't go in there and just like power and let them run you over. You got to go and just throw at their knees. Exactly. Uh, you know, it's funny. I, I talk about this with head coaches a lot. I, in, in the preseason, I would allow my backup kicker, my backup snapper, and my backup holder and punter, backup punter, all four of those positions, whoever they are, to get at least a couple reps in the last preseason game. Because you don't want to go into a game, a critical game like that, and hey, I've never kicked a field goal before, or I've never held before, I've never punted before. You know, like the Chiefs, Travis Kelsey's their holder. Can you imagine all of a sudden Harrison Bucker gets hurt in the Super Bowl and you got to make a game-winning field goal, and he's got to go in there and hold, and he's never done it ever in a game before. And so I think it's just... You know, it's smart, it's prudent to allow those guys to get at least one opportunity in a preseason game, but but nobody does it. Yeah. No, and in hindsight, I mean, one of the big plays of that game turned out to be a fourth and 23 from the Cardinals 27. Normally, that's yeah. a field goal opportunity. They go for it. There's no plays for fourth and 23. You're not going to convert there. Do you think the 49ers maybe should have allowed Wisnowski to try to kick that field goal? How, I mean, how badly could it have gone? Well, stop me if you've heard this before, but Kyle Shanahan should have ran the ball more in the second half. Right. <laughs> uh, I mean, you just look at, you know, how they're running the ball and, you know, the lead, you got a double digit lead and, and you throw, you know, a couple picks and, you know, but the Cardinals made the plays. I mean, I, I, I love the way Kyler Murray ran the ball. And we talked about that last week, you know, his not being aggressive and not taking advantage of those opportunities. It started right away. And I mean, when he lifts his hand up on that touchdown run, when he's basically even with everybody, that showed you the confidence that he has in his body. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, I mean, I was blown away. I'm like, wait, did he just do that? Right. Did he lift his hand right there <laughs> and then kind of hit the turbo button and run away from everybody. I mean, that just shows you health-wise, he's back to where he was prior to that injury. All right, the defense, I I'm not sure I expected this Cardinal defense after what we saw against Cliff Kingsbury's commanders to shut out the 49ers in the second half. Um, what are your thoughts on what they put on the field yesterday? Yeah, I thought they did a really good job. I mean, that that's one of the better teams in the NFL. Um, and you watch them in the first half, and Ayuk looked really good. They're running the ball well. Brock Purdy was dicing you know, and just look so confident and to be able to come out and to make the plays when you needed to and to be able to get pressure on Purdy and, and force him into mistakes and get a couple of interceptions and get a fumble. I mean, I, I mean, it was just you can't say enough about what they did. And that was a critical, critical game. I mean, if you're sitting here at one and three uh, or one and four, I'm sorry, after that after that loss, if you lose again to San Francisco, where do you go with your season? You know, I mean, you're in such a hole, but now at two and three, and we talked about trying to get to four and four after eight games and the position that they could be in if they get to four and four. And, and that's that's viable now. They got two tough games coming up, but, um, you know, that, that's that's a situation where you could definitely get to four and four now. Now, James Conner in the second half, I, I look, I've seen James Conner truck players. I've seen him stiff arm <laughs> Patrick Peterson into the next county. The, he made breaking tackles look effortless. Was that all about his will? Was it a reflection of the 49ers not being locked in? Was it the 49ers wearing down? What, what did you see there? Like he's such a great back, isn't he? I mean, I, I just love the way he runs. I love everything about him. His mentality, his team first mentality, the physicality that he runs with. You just got to find ways to get him the ball, whether it's throwing the ball, passing the ball. Like I go back to that first half against Buffalo and really that first drive and how they just decided, hey, we're going to come out and we're going to feature James Conner. And <clears throat> the more they can do that, the better. Because when you're running the ball with the ability of, of Kyler to put that ball into his belly and the way the defenses have to react and respond, because of the back that he is, and then the ability for Kyler to pull it 
and then now use his legs or throw the ball down the field. It just creates such a dynamic with this offense that makes it one of the better offenses in the NFL. We're kicking it with Jay Feely as we do Monday mornings here on Bickley and Murata mornings. We had the discussion earlier amongst ourselves. We also asked Kyle Vandenbosch about it. Um, the connection between Kyler Murray and Marvin Harrison Jr., or lack thereof, yeah. through five weeks, Jay. What, what are you seeing there? How big of a concern should it be? Well, he's talented. There's no question. And, you know, you sit there and, okay, he's got seven targets. He only has two receptions in the game. There's been games where he seems like he's invisible. And then, you know, a couple of halves where he seems like he's unstoppable. And so it's a maturation process. He's got to understand and learn how to be a pro and understand what they want him to do this with this offense. And, you know, Petsy wants Kyler Murray to play within the offense. They're not an offense that is going to say, hey, we're going to run plays designed for Marvin Harrison Jr. Mm -hmm. They are an offense that they want him to run the offense and to go through his progressions. And if he's open in his progression, throw him the ball. And so that's how it's going to be. And they believe that that's the best way. Me, personally, I would have three or four plays a game where I'm designing it for him. Yes, you can have your offense where it's progression-based, but I want to take advantage of his physicality. And when we get the matchup we want, I don't really care about what the play was. If I have the matchup I want, the NFL is about matchups. And so you got to go to that matchup, but that's not how they're running this offense. And so you're going to see this until they get a better connection, until he understands more how to run uh, these routes and, and within the, the – construct of the offense mm -hmm. when you look at kyler murray um i i know this this almost feels like it's going to be a season-long evaluation but but to do what they did on the road yesterday i, I i'm just been toying with this idea that is it actually easier for this team to play on the road than it is at home given the mixed loyalties and just the the weird vibage that we've been seeing too often in glendale you think there's something to that no, I don't buy it. Okay. I don't buy it. But I, I'll, I'll tell you this. I liked playing on the road better because it was kind of you against the world. And I liked that feeling. I liked the feeling of going to battle with my guys and, you know, going to the hotel. And there's no distractions from family. Nobody's in town. You don't have to worry about picking somebody up at the airport or driving around, you know, and, and entertaining them on the weekend. I liked going on the road. So that, that is a valid point. Um, but you have an advantage at home. You should. And, you know, you should be able to take advantage of that, um, you know, defensively and when offenses have to use silent count. And that's on the fans, you know. That's on the fans not to sell their tickets and to be loud when, uh, when that defense is on the field and help them out. Jay Feely, our guest here on Arizona Sports. We started with kickers. I want to end with the other kicker. Chad Ryland <laughs> was sitting on a couch last week. He gets a call midweek, comes out. Uh, not only boots three field goals, but has some adversity and then kicks the go-ahead field goal. And people, you know this better than anybody, Jay, people will diminish what kickers do in the NFL uh, from the outside. But can you put into words just how difficult that, that assignment is for ah. a kicker to come in and perform when you don't even know your teammates, basically? The thing that fans don't understand is that it, it takes a while to get comfortable with a snapper and a holder, mm -hmm. you know, and I did that a lot of times where I, I would get cut and I'd have to go in and get signed and then go play with the Jets that week. And it really takes two or three weeks to get in a rhythm where you understand like when they're going to snap it. How, Cause if I'm, if I'm anticipating and I'm moving forward a little bit or I'm, I'm a little slow, you know, because I don't really know his, his rhythms and how he, you know, does it, that has an impact on, you know, how I kick the ball and how comfortable I am. And if, am I aggressive through the ball? Just all those types of things. So, you know, and to go out there and to get your field goal, not only to miss, but to get it blocked and to get it returned for a touchdown. And it looks like it totally changes the game and you're going to lose the game because of that. And then to sit with that in your gut the whole game and then be able to come back and hit a game winner, you know, says a lot about that young man because he knows on the sideline that that block was my fault. Like yeah, I hit yeah. a low ball. I didn't hit it well. Yes. They didn't get any penetration. You know, that's all on me. And so you're just, it's just eating at mm -hmm. you the entire game, you know, and you're begging for a chance to get an opportunity to come back uh, and hit a game winner or do something to help your team. And so a pretty cool moment for him to get, to get that opportunity and then come through for his team. Yeah. How weird will it be if he's cooking for the 49ers on Thursday against Seattle? <laughs> <laughs> he, he could be too. He might. <laughs> Jay, he might. Jay, great stuff as always. Thanks, man. We'll talk to you next Monday. All right, guys. Great to talk to you. Yeah, Take care. Jay Feely kicking it with Jay every Monday here on Bickley and Murata Morning. Thanks for watching Bickley and Murata. Click to see the latest Bickley Blast and hit the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.